everybody. It's me again, Tim. Manly Hybrid Homesteading. Well, I'm just out checking the buckets today. I got another project I'm working on. I'm going to be doing a water filter on the whole house water filter system we have under our house. And uh, I thought I'd just take a walk around first and check the buckets real quick. I did this yesterday to see if we had anything. But today, it's uh, another chilly day. It's quite sunny out here, but it's uh, still about... I don't know if it's even 15 degrees out here, so it's kind of chilly, but, uh, oh, I don't know what's where I'm stepping here. I'm going to fall on my butt. You said butt. Yeah, I, uh, I had to change the water, I got to change the water filter out because the, uh, I can notice the water pressure is dropping, so I'll get to that in a minute. I just figured I'd take a minute and take a walk around, check the, check the buckets and check the lines, and, um, I just checked one bucket and it's, uh, I had about a third of a bucket, this one too. Let me fl flip this camera around, I'll show you what I'm looking at here. Yeah, so here's bucket number two. Uh, sorry, once again, I got awkward position with the camera here, but dripping pretty good. I can, I can see that. I can't see it with my sunglasses on. But yeah, that's uh, for, uh, I think it's like I said, it's not even 20 degrees out here maybe I haven't checked in a second but it's uh, dripping but the you can see it's definitely frozen down there and uh, still a little bit of leaking I uh, tried putting a little bit of uh, plumbers tape Teflon tape around to see if I could help it I'm not sure if it's really doing much this one's still a little damp too but definitely learning a lot about uh, tapping trees this year and making some mistakes but that's how you learn so that's what I'm going to do. We're uh, doing good on this bucket. I'm not going to collect anything today. Uh, I figured it's cold and well it's good in the bucket. It's frozen. I, I uh, took a little bit of snow from around the floor here on the ground and packed it around the buckets. Check this one over here. Same thing, got a little bit in there. So I'm not gonna bother with them. It's supposed to be, that one's not bad. A little leaking on that one still. However, uh, it's supposed to be cold this week. So I know that it's flowing. This one's leaking really good. I'll definitely try to improve on that for next year. That one's actually got a good amount in it. So I might end up, just because I don't want them to overflow, so I might end up moving them in, moving that one into the bigger bucket. I might as well check these last two over here, I guess. Those aren't flowing as much. That big one on the, I just checked is the worst one, so. Now we'll get to that in a little bit. I'll figure for now. I'd like to uh, get that filter done. I'll come back to that bucket a little later. But I'd like to get this filter done. Uh, as I said earlier, I noticed the uh, water pressure has been diminishing a little bit which to me would indicate maybe the filter that's in there is starting to get a little plugged up and now if you watched our other video about the water filter systems that we got uh, it talks about the different filters that we've used and I explained that we are trying out a new filter this is a carbon let me see here. Pure Plus Sintering Activated Carbon Block Water Filter. And I got to say, this is the first time we've used these. So we've tried different filters over the last, uh, well, we've had this filter system in for now two, three years. And this was our first attempt at the carbon filter ones. And 
I definitely noticed an immediate improvement in the water quality um, and also in the lack or I should say less uh, rust that was coming through. It didn't seem to stain our stuff as much so it definitely seemed to work better than the other ones we've been using and of course it uh, by working better probably plugged up a little quicker too now we do have an artesian well we don't have a dug well we have an artesian well it's quite deep goes right down into the uh, ledge here under underneath us there's a it's all forest but not too far down you can't see under the snow but there's actually a ledge that sticks up in the various places around here and uh, we actually have a hillside behind the house over here and I'll show you sometime that is just open exposed ledge so they call this area ledge ledge wood and the reason being obviously is that there's lead so we have water that comes down the hill and flows into our artesian well which is quite deep i want to say if i, re I remember it's been about seven years since i the guy told me how deep it was but i think it was uh, a couple hundred feet maybe 250 or so and so our, our well is constantly full we don't have a water issue in terms of qual qual uh, quantity we have a uh, issue in terms of quality, I guess you'd say. So we installed this uh, water filter, whole house water filter system. And well, it's been working great to help us. It's one in three stages that we use for, for we in the case of the whole house water filter, we, um, it, it filters everything uh, right from the holding tank all the way up through the, everything in the, in the house basically gets filtered at least through this one filter and then up in the kitchen we filter it again under the sink and then we filter it again our drinking water through our zero water water filter so I'm going to turn the camera back around here and uh, I'm sure you appreciate the nice views from the sunny day but we're going to get the camera turned around I'll get it set up and I'll show you what we're working with here all right so let me get these off of here now what we got is uh, as you've seen, we, we have a mobile home, that's our house, and getting a whole water, whole house water system isn't that easy. Uh, we can't get the big, tall, standing ones. We have issues. We have certain things we have to deal with here in terms of the weather and whatnot, so, and the limited amount of space that we have to work with. So I came up with this uh, system a few years ago and got it piped in there. Everything was new when we moved the house here. We had a new water tank, all new water lines right from the well, brand new pump. Everything was freshly installed. We put everything brand new when we moved in here. And I wanted to put this whole water filter system on, but the concern was obviously that it can't freeze. It, it's, it gets down sometimes, you know, 20 below zero here in Southern Maine, it can get really cold. So it really um, is a concern as far as the weather goes. And we, my hands are frozen. That's try to change hands I got a glove on the other hand and so that's our, our that was my main concern now these mobile homes at least this one here um, I'm assuming the ones that are this is quite an old home but it uh, had a uh, forced hot air uh, heating system that is very close to where I put this water fil filter system in now the forced hot air furnace that we have that heats our home actually has a vent that comes out right directly below the furnace and blows uh, some warm air underneath the, the home here under the trailer. Now we have a concrete slab, the home sits on a concrete slab, so that holds a little bit of heat and with the little bit of heat that it gets from the furnace, it actually keeps it around, I've, around 40 degrees of course it varies on how cold it gets outside but generally speaking it holds it above freezing no problem so I don't have to worry about anything freezing under the mobile home unless we lost power and the furnace went out or something like that in which case of course the concrete is going to hold some heat as long as you're heating it from the beginning of the season it'll hold some heat for some period of time maybe not long but I've got ideas on backup plans if that ever happened it's never happened yet and I'm not too concerned with it happening I think one time I woke up in the morning, it was 21 below or 22 below zero and, the, and there was no water, it had froze. So I had actually just uh, put a quick uh, heat to it. I had a propane uh, salamander 
space heater type thing that I put under here for maybe a couple minutes and it was fine. It wasn't even frozen solid. It was just got cold and that was the worst case scenario that I've ever had. So with that in mind, what I wanted to do was give the water tank and the water filter some protection from the cold. So I built a little box and I'm just going to flip this camera back around and show you what I did here. So here you see the skirting on our mobile home. I opened it up already. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just take it off and slide a piece out. And what I did is I built this box. You can see this is just insulation. I think that's the one inch or maybe one and a quarter, one and a half, I'm not sure. But it's the uh, thicker insulation. And I made a little box. Now it's not thick over here, but the door on the front is, is this thickness. So I just basically built this little box and I'm gonna open it up for you right now and show you how it comes out and then how we access the water filter from here. Maybe this will help somebody else who's in these conditions and needs to come up with an idea on how to filter their water and not let everything freeze underneath. So let me get this set up and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, a little bit of an awkward angle here, but hopefully you can see what's going on. So basically, like I said, I built this little box out of insulation and this is with the heat that gets blown underneath a mobile home. It constantly, at least under the home in the area where I've got the thermostat, and I'll show you where I, where I have it here. Basically, real simple, I just made a little, couple little spacers to hold it on. It's nothing fancy, it's, it's very crude and there's nothing special about it. I just was looking for a way to trap a little more heat inside where the filter and the water tank were. And I came up with this rather in a last minute kind of pretty tight under here. Let me get that out of the way. All right. So here's what we got. Let me show you. Got this wireless thermometer that I put in here. And this uh, this is just the sensor. I have the base inside the house and that tells me the constant temperature inside this little box. So I know if it's, I can monitor it from inside and know if it's um, getting below freezing for some reason, which would tell me something's obviously not right because as I mentioned, we have hot air that blows underneath this whole house and warms up the concrete and it doesn't stay hot but it definitely stays above freezing and that's all my goal was just to keep everything above freezing which it seems to work now if i ran into a real issue where i thought i might have more problems i also put heat tape on here so you can see i ran heat tape all the way down and it goes all the way Oh, I can't. It's on the back side here. And I wrapped it actually inside this insulation here. But there's heat tape that runs, and you can see right here, under here, and follows the line. So this also I can control. It's plugged into an outlet underneath the house here. Then the other um, thing I did is I also put a small little heater in here, and that also is on an extension cord that I can plug in it. It's on all the time, but it only turns on if I plug it in upstairs. So if I notice the temperature in this little box, which this sensor will tell me is dropping below 32 and I'm concerned, I don't want anything to freeze, my water tank, my water lines, my water filter, I can turn this little filter on. It puts out just enough heat with the insulated walls here in this little box that it keeps everything well above freezing, never even close. So I have no concerns. It's kind of like a triple backup system, uh, heat under the home, a heated power cord line, and a mini heater that I can plug in anytime. This power cord line, I may have said I plug it in. Actually what happens is in the winter time, it's plugged in all the time right here. And what happens is in the fall, I'll come in when it starts getting cold and I'll plug it in and I'll leave it running all winter 
and then in the spring I'll just unplug it we don't need it obviously so I just I don't even use it in the summertime but the heater uh, is what I run a cord upstairs and if I notice the temperatures dropping I can monitor it through this sensor I can just plug that little heater in from inside and it drives the temperature right up in here so I really don't have any issues but for today we're just going to be replacing this water filter so I'm going to set the camera back up here it only takes a couple minutes I'll go ahead and get that done and I'll show you the process I have this little instruction sheet here that tells me it's kind of kind of old and uh, kind of beat up but right there you can see where it shows the top of the filter and the off position is when the lever is turned towards me this this lever has three positions right now it's in the middle and if I turn it one way it'll bypass and if I turn it the other way it'll turn off so I'm gonna just pull it towards me turn it off now that turns off the water to the entire trailer and hopefully Brenda's not in there using it she's not so again turn it pull it towards me turns it off and I'm gonna just set the camera up here and just unscrew this and we'll get that new filter put in there all right here we go so gonna get a little bit wet maybe from the water that comes in that stays in this this canister part and the water that's coming down on me from the side of the trailer here from the roof so I got it off already I'm just going to turn this lever, uh, turn this canister here. Try to get a good angle on it. All right, I got that loose. I may have over tightened it a little bit, but I'm going to take my gloves off for this next step because I know everything's going to get wet real quick here. And so basically, I'm just going to unscrew this. And dump this. All right. So here's our filter. Here's our old filter. I'm just going to leave this over here. And I brought a rag. Just wipe this out a little bit. I take my new filter. Comes with new washers. You gotta be careful with those. They don't stay on the filter by themselves. So you gotta be careful when you place them in the right place. Make sure they're on there. Same with the O-ring that goes on the canister itself. I may not be using all the right terminology, but no kidding. Maybe you guys get an idea of what I'm doing here. I'm not so sure about that. All right. So we got so we got two new washers for the end of the filter on each side, and those go in there. Now I'm just going to put this one inside canister right there the bottom so that when I put this filter in there it'll line right up and then I'm gonna go ahead and screw that back on actually I'm gonna take my o-ring first there's an o-ring that goes on the top of here okay screw that back on And as you screw that on, that'll line itself up inside. You don't want to overdo it because it was pretty tight to get off. You just get it, I think, an eighth or a quarter turn after it seats, just like that. And then go ahead and turn your water back on, and you'll see it filling right back up. Make sure you check for leaks. Once you check it for leaks, everything looks good. It's on. Everything's fine. All right. That's it. New filter installed. It's really not that difficult to do. It's a tight spot to do under a mobile home, but it's uh, actually, uh, I find it works pretty well. It would be nice if it was in a basement, but 
you know, we don't live in a, a home with a basement, so that's what we deal with. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this all back together again. <laughs> it all done new water filter and we'll take the old one throw that one out now the purpose of trying this one is to see if it was gonna be any better than the ones we've been using I gotta say yeah definitely like it uh, a little bit more money but for the job it does uh, definitely see us uh, buying some more of these so hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below please like subscribe share Really appreciate uh, everybody watching the videos. Big help for us. We have, uh, I think, 79 subscribers as of this morning. Thank you all very much. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to be putting out a lot more videos coming up. We've got a lot of things coming on. We've got, of course, some more uh, maple syrup thing to do. And i got to go get my trash before it blows away. You all have a nice day. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Much better water pressure.